Hey there, good morning. I wanted to welcome you to our online service here at Center Church. Before we kick off, I just had a few things I wanted to share with you. First thing is, we would love to connect with you. Our email address is connect at centerchurch.org. Shoot us a message there if you'd like to get plugged in. Secondly, do you have any questions about controversial issues, the Bible, theology, or church? If so, Pastor Godfrey has a ministry called Pastor Godfrey's Corner, where you can submit a question and then we'll get you an answer to it. Lastly, we would love for you to connect with us on social media. Our Instagram and our Facebook handles are where we're most active and in the description below, um, links will be posted. That being said, I hope you enjoy the rest of our service. Mark chapter six, verse two. And on the Sabbath day, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astonished saying, where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Today's message title is Jesus, the true wisdom. I'll be answering the two questions first. What makes wisdom true? And second, do you trust Jesus? in your daily decisions. Today, we wrap up our year-long study in the book of Proverbs. I understand I just read a verse from Mark, uh, Mark chapter 6, but we'll find out why we read the, uh, this passage from the Gospel of Mark. But on September 13th, 2020, about six months after the pandemic lockdown, we began the series with the title, Sapiens, Being Wise in the Midst of Fools, followed by Soul Cleanse and Proverbs for the last three months. So let's find out how Jesus is the true wisdom of God from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6. First question, what makes wisdom true? The three questions in our verse today provide answers to what makes wisdom true. There are three. First, where. Second, what. And third, how. So each question began with these three words. They were asked by many who heard Jesus in the synagogue. What Jesus taught and performed blew the Jewish people's head, their minds, I'm sorry. They were astonished. They were amazed. Jesus definitely amazed many people as Mark bears witness in chapter 5 of Mark's gospel. In chapter 5, we read about the story of Jesus healing the man with an, uh, with an unclean spirit, healing of a woman who suffered from the discharge of blood for 12 years and raising Jairus' daughter from the dead. The answers to their questions help us understand the kind of wisdom Jesus had. So here's the first question that the Jewish people asked. Where did this man get these, uh, get these things? Jesus' wisdom comes from his relationship with the Father. Jesus' wisdom comes from his relationship with the Father. So Luke reports the story of Joseph and Mary going to Jerusalem every year to celebrate the feast of Passover. One time they discovered the boy Jesus was missing on their way home. This is what Jesus tells them when they found him. Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? From this instance, we can tell the kind of relationship Jesus had with the father. You can read about it throughout the gospel, but I want to just point out to you John chapter 17, where you can experience and feel the intimacy and fellowship Jesus had with his father from his prayer. 
So here's the second question that the Jewish people asked. What is the wisdom given to him? The wisdom Jesus had, the wisdom that Jesus that was given to Jesus is none other than the fear of the Lord. Jesus resisted and defeated Satan in the wilderness with the fear of the Lord, a reverent respect and trust in God the Father and His Word. This is what we have been learning from Proverbs. Wisdom comes from the fear of the Lord. In other words, the fear of the Lord makes you wise. Here's a third question that the Jewish people asked. How are such mighty works done by His hands? Jesus performed the mighty works by the power of the Holy Spirit. An angel of the Lord told Joseph in his dream, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. This is what we read in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, the very beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, the very beginning of the New Testament, we see the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person who miraculously caused Mary to be conceived with Jesus. So from the time of conception to the time of resurrection, the Holy Spirit filled and empowered Jesus to do mighty works. Throughout the Gospels, we discover who Jesus is both through His words and His works. We know Jesus is the true wisdom because Jesus came to be with us, to teach us, and to lead us. Jesus came to be with you, to teach you, and to lead you to eternal life. What does it mean to say that Jesus came to be with us? Jesus came to be with us. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. You know, the rich and famous in the world, or the world, then and now, are not with the common folks. They don't live in the midst of the middle class or the lower class. In the past, they lived in castles and palaces. Now these days they live in gated mansions and skyscrapers. True religion is a religion where God comes to be with His people. In all the religions, people have to go to God or be good enough to be with God. However, Jesus came and lived in the midst of people who were marginalized and mistreated. And this is how we know that Jesus is a true wisdom. He's not just all talk. He walked the talk. He lived amongst the people. Secondly, Jesus came to teach us Jesus is a rabbi, a Jewish teacher. In Mark chapter 9, Jesus goes to a high mountain with Peter, James, and John. He is transfigured before them. Elijah and Moses appeared before them and were talking with Jesus. Moses and Elijah represent the law and the prophets of the Old Testament. I'm sure Peter was astonished, like the Jewish people who heard Jesus perform miracles. And this is what Peter said to, you know, in the following, in Mark chapter 9, verse 5. He said, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Well, Apostle Paul argues in the first letter to the believers in Corinth, that Jews look for signs or miracles and Greeks seek wisdom in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Both religious and non-religious people 
are looking for the wow factor, respectively. Jesus both understands and fulfills the scriptures in all the dimensions of his truth, promises, and stories of the Bible. Jesus came to lead us. Jesus is Lord, the Messiah, the Anointed One, Christ. So Jesus asked one of uh, his disciples one day, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? In Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. The, Jew, the Jewish crowd thought Jesus was John the Baptist, Elijah, or one of the prophets. And that's what the disciples say. And Jesus asked them, Who do you say uh, uh, that I am? And Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. What does it mean to say that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? So in Matthew chapter 12, you see the phrase, greater than, appear three times in verse 16, verse 41, and verse 42. In verse 6, Jesus says, something greater than the temple is here. In verse 41, Jesus says, Something greater than Jonah is here. In verse 42, Jesus says, Something greater than Solomon is here. So these three things are mentioned, the temple, Jonah, and Solomon. Something greater than the temple points to Jesus being the priest to his people. Remember, God with us, Emmanuel, no longer do people of God have to go to a mountain or a temple or a certain holy place. But Jesus came to be with them. Something greater than Jonah points to Jesus being the prophet to his people. Just like the many prophets in the Old Testament who were killed for speaking the truth of God. And Jesus was killed as a prophet and just as Jonah was in the, in the fish for three days, Jesus used that parable and said, He rose from the dead on the third day. So there's a connection between Jonah and Jesus. Something greater than Solomon points to Jesus being the king of his people. The true prince of peace. These three types of people were anointed in the Old Testament, the priests, prophets, and kings, as the representatives of God in each capacity. Jesus is a true wisdom because in these offices, Jesus loves, Jesus knows, and Jesus obeys God perfectly. When what we see in the Old Testament is that these different priests, prophets, and kings failed, Jesus came, and He succeeded, and He fulfilled the law of God, showing what the true, of, true wisdom of God looks like. So the question where points to the priesthood of Jesus, greater than the, 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 greater than the temple, and the question, what, points to the prophetic office of Jesus greater than Jonah. What the Word of God says to His people. And the question, finally, the question, how, points to the kingly office of Jesus greater than Solomon. The Apostle Paul describes Jesus as the wisdom of God with respect to His relationship to his people in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. It says, And because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us the wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Righteousness connects to your right standing before God as justified and right with God 
as well as the freedom you have because you know the truth in Jesus. Do you know that you are saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Sanctification connects to your right response to God in love and worship as well as the whole life imitation and intimacy with God by being filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you see yourself bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Redemption connects to your right actions that reflect God's character and will in the work of restoration and renewal of all things. Do you want to grow wise in your daily decisions? If you don't grow wise in your daily decisions, I think this is the question that you have to answer, which is, do you trust Jesus in your daily decisions? You need a true wisdom of God, true wisdom from God for you to grow wise with daily decisions and in all the things that you do. Your decisions are connected to your desires. When you make decisions regarding the topics we covered during the series in the Proverbs, such as justice, power, money, work, parenting, sex, marriage, insights, plans, and friendship, do you see Jesus as your priest, prophet, and king? Do you see Jesus being there for you and with you? That you're not alone, but He's come to be with you. Do you learn from Jesus as your, pro as your prophet, the will and the word of God? And do you follow Jesus as your Lord, as your leader? Do you go to Jesus with your desires, with respect to the things that I mentioned? Do you honestly tell Jesus what you desire? Do you confess to Jesus what you idolize? Do you ask Jesus to rescue you and renew your desire? Do you go to Him? Do you go to Jesus to be loved, be known, and be served? When you trust Jesus in your daily decisions, where you live, work, and play becomes the holy ground through which the glory of God is reflected in and through you. So, let's ask these three questions again. Where does your wisdom come from? What does your wisdom consist of? How does your wisdom work? Jesus came to be with you. This means that you are not alone in your indecision. Indecision is a time when you cannot make a decision, right? Bad decisions or good decisions. That Jesus is with you. Jesus is with you through it all. All the consequences of all your decisions. You can be vulnerable without feeling defeated. You do not need to compare yourself with anyone because Jesus is with you. You do not need to feel condemned because Jesus is with you. Because Jesus is with you, you can be yourself. Grow and become like God as God's adopted child. Does your wisdom come from your relationship with Jesus, just as Jesus' wisdom came from his relationship with his Father. Jesus came to teach you. Jesus helps you to know God as your good and loving Father. Jesus helps you to know who you are. Jesus helps you to know the world you live in. You can be wise and say, you don't know 
And at the same time, you can be wise and say, I do know because Jesus is your rabbi. You're the best teacher in the world. Truth makes people eager. When people know the truth, they are eager to tell the truth. What is the truth that you are, you are eager to tell? That you are eager to share with your friends, the people you know? Does your wisdom consist of your respect for Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Finally, Jesus came to lead you. Jesus leads you in how you spend your time, money, and energy. Jesus does not lead you in a vacuum, but in a covenant relationships, such as marriage, family, or a local church formed by spiritual friendship and spiritual family. Are you intentional in your relationships? Just as the first disciple invited one another and were intentional in their relationship with Jesus, are you being intentional in your relationships? If you're married, do you take time to listen and pray for your spouse? If you live with your family, do you take time to be present and really listen and love and serve one another? When's the last time you connected with your coworker, your colleague, or friends, or neighbor? Are you being intentional? Whether it's once a week, once a month, or every other month, or once a quarter. No matter the frequency, or no matter the quantity, are you being intentional? And do you know why you are inviting? And do you know why you want to be with other people. I hope and pray that your relationship with Jesus, who is the true wisdom of God, will make you wise unto your salvation, both now and forever. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, the true wisdom who was with you and is with you now, but suffer the separation so that we can be invited to get to know you as our Father and be rescued and be restored in our relationship with you and in your world as well as with one another. Lord, we confess that we have been foolish with our desires that are placed on other things. We lack self-control. Our words, our thoughts, and our actions do not match. Sometimes we willfully go in, go in a way that is foolish and bad and destructive and bring harm to ourselves and to others, we confess and we pray, Lord, that you forgive us of our foolishness and for the times that we have been fools. And Lord, if we are aware of people in our lives who are persisting in the foolishness of unbelief, help us to pray for them. Help us, O oh Lord, to continue to repent of our foolish pride and come to Jesus in humility, in repentance, and learn from Him. And we pray, Lord, that You will make us wise. Your children, no matter how old or how young we are, no matter what kind of stages of life we're in, no matter what the circumstances are, whether we are having a bad time or good times, Lord, help us. Help us to grow wise and help us Share this wisdom and tell people this wisdom from God that salvation, sanctification, and redemption are found in your Son, Jesus Christ, 
And may we continue to participate and may we receive the benefits of the spiritual blessings that you have given us through your Son, Jesus. And in his name we pray. Amen. Filled with your glory.